in March, nearly 120 Farm Bureau members and staff representing over 50 counties traveled to Washington, D.C. for the annual Washington Legislative Conference. Let's visit our nation's capital as Farm Bureau members tackled the issues of the Farm Bill, free trade, and EPA regulations. This year's visit to Washington, D.C. was unique in a sense, for the 112th Congress has the largest freshman class in over 60 years, with five of Michigan's 15 House members among them. All right, Veteran members of Congress Candace Miller, Fred Upton and Dave Camp, along with newly elected members Tim Wahlberg and Dr. Dan Beneshek of Michigan's 1st Congressional District, all took to the stage for comments at the Congressional Breakfast. As far as my committee, I, I'm on the Natural Resources Committee, the VA Committee, and the Science Committee. And uh, in, the, in the Natural Resources Committee, of course, we were uh, working to get more uh, oil drilling here in this country to you know, bring down, try to bring down the price of fuel, which I know is crucial to um, the farming industry. Attendees also had the opportunity to hear from Senator Carl Levin, who spoke bluntly about the estate tax. The greatness of this country, and this is what Teddy Roosevelt said, Republican president, when he got the estate tax passed, it was in order to keep wealth from being concentrated more and more and more in just a few families. And so Teddy Roosevelt said to keep opportunity open, we should have an estate tax. That was the origin of the estate tax and I have to agree with it. But we don't want to catch any farm. We don't want to catch a small business, and we can devise it so we don't catch any small business or any farm. Senator Debbie Stabenow chairs the Senate Agriculture Committee, and she spoke to the group about the future of the Farm Bill. We're starting from a basis of what do we need to do to create the strongest safety net today and help you have every tool you need to manage risk. Where do we need to go on crop insurance to expand it and make it more effective? Uh, how do we make acre more effective? Or should we not do that? But if right now it's way too complicated. Most people can't figure it out, can't sign up because can't figure it out, don't know what to count on. Okay, how do we deal with that? So rather than just having programs, let's talk about what you need to be effective. That's the conversation that we need to have. Senator Stabenow felt it important that the entire Senate Ag Committee staff take the time to meet everyone from Michigan and to assure them that their input is necessary and appreciated. Members also made their way to Capitol Hill to meet their lawmakers and their staff. Those from Michigan's 2nd District met Congressman Bill Heisinger outside the House chamber for their meeting, who then treated the group to a view of Washington from the famous speaker's balcony. That's the Department of Treasury. Right behind that is the White House. Now, the, the, the story is that Andrew Jackson was in the middle of, of a, shall we say, a spitting match with Congress. Uh, and uh, when it came time to cite the Department of Treasury, where they were going to build the building, he actually made them move it up to block the view of the Capitol from the White House because he didn't want to look at the awful Congress that he was going to do a battle with. The congressman serves on the House Financial Services Committee along with three subcommittees, one being International Monetary Policy and Trade. He was one of 67 members to sign a letter to President Obama calling for the passage of trade agreements with Panama, Colombia, and South Korea. We know from input from you all that, uh, that uh, these trade agreements are very important and as we're looking at export markets, how are we going to expand the, uh, the, you know, the marketplace for the products that are produced in Michigan? So they are important. Uh, I think there's always that sense of caution of are we making sure that it's fair trade and that it's a level playing field and that we have benefit coming out of that. Uh, pretty clearly, especially in, uh, in terms of Korea, that, uh, that appears to be happening. And uh, we've been able to deal with the automotive side and, and clearly the benefits to agriculture are there. The South Korean embassy hosted an educational session for several of the attendees to help them better understand what the Korea-U.S. free trade agreement would mean for both countries. Figures show it would be one of the largest trade agreements for the United States, with the American Farm Bureau estimating it could mean an additional $1.9 billion in agricultural exports for the U.S. I understand the biggest um, export items from the United States um, to Korea 
um, is grains and high dense skins and beef products and uh, soybeans, um, coarse grains, um, processed food. So the state of Michigan can benef benefit greatly from no or much less tariffs that are applicable currently to those agricultural products. The trip and haul was a new experience for many Farm Bureau members, giving them the opportunity to see the nation's legislative process firsthand. This is my first time at the Washington Legislative Seminar and it was an absolutely wonderful experience. Probably one of the things that stood out to me the most was the opportunity to talk with the congressional staff, uh, being able to talk with uh, somebody from Representative Dingell's office, um, specifically about issues that are very important to Michigan agriculture, uh, such as uh, restrictions on chemical use, potential banning of atrazine, why we need to keep products like that in the market, and also um, talking with him about why we do not want additional permits necessary uh, for us to have to get um, permits from the Clean Water Act in order to spray chemical products. You can stay up to date with the issues of the Farm Bill, pending trade agreements and EPA regulations through the Michigan Farm News, both in print and online.